Hi, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to episode 267 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears. Bobby, come here. Stop. For the love of God, please sit down. Come on. Sit down on your spot. Good girl. Sit down. Well done. Yes. See, this is what I'm learning. We've been ta- we take it. We took it to a first ever good girl session uh, of dog training yesterday, and uh, we found that she has two problems, right? And that is, uh, she's got um, anxiety. Woo-hoo. Yes. So, uh, shout out to all of my anxious listeners out there. <laughs> um, and she also eats cat shit. So shout out to all my listeners who eat cat shit. <laughs> uh, no, she, she's, she's an anxious dog um, and, uh, and she has trouble with impulse control. So what basically what that means, the trainer explained it as, and it makes a lot of sense for this idiot, dogs can even, uh, please come here, come on, Bobby, come here, uh uh-uh, come here, find Rome. All right, whatever, I give up. Dogs can either either think or feel, and when they're they're in a feeling mode, they can't think, because she's pretty good, (laughs) right? She's pretty good. Sit down. Good girl. Yes, and that's what I'm learning, right? Because the biggest problem is she can do everything I ask her to do. She can sit, she can stay, she can. Her recall's pretty good, un, unless something exciting or something scary is happening. Down, good girl. Yes, uh, and the the reason the trainer reckons she does that is because dogs can either feel or think. So when a lot of feeling is happening, she can't use her brain. She's like, man, some, something's going to kill me. I, I'm, so, I'm sorry, dude. I would love to be a good girl right now, but I reckon that clothesline is going to kill me because uh, it moved in the wind and that's t- terrifying. She's scared of the dark and the wind. Stay, sit, sit down and stay. See, I think she's trying to scam me. She's like, every time I get up and then come back, he gives me a treat. Um, <laughs> but... The thing is, the the trainer, she wants us to basically make her feel much more calm and much more happy all the time. And the way to do that is uh, she wants us to just stop saying no, right? We're getting rid of no. We're getting rid of uh uh-uh. We're not doing that anymore. All we're going to do is say yes when she displays the behavior we want and reward her. And she said, look, every time you say yes, you need to pay her. Even if it means going and getting a treat and giving it to her, you need to reward good behavior. Yes. So basically what I have, what I used to have is a dog, a companion. What I have now is a debt collector Uh, because (laughs) every time I say that fucking word, she looks at me and she's like, come on, dude, pay up. I don't know. And, and, and what's, what's interesting is it is working. She is a lot more relaxed. She is listening more for the, for fuck's sake. Can you come on? I don't say no anymore. Bobby, come here. Come here. Come on, sit down there. And I don't uh, sit, stay down. Yes. You see, she listens now. Before, she wouldn't come back at all. She still gets up and walks around, but she does listen. And basically what's happened with the dog is she hasn't changed her behavior too much, but she's getting a lot more positive affirmation. So she's like, man, I don't know what I changed recently, but I am fucking killing it. I am the best dog ever. Every day I get treats and rewards and and, and positive affirmation. I'm nailing it. Dear God, sit down. Anyway, I'm just going to let her roam. Uh, Because we're trying to work on her recall. Because at the park, she just doesn't really come back unless she wants to. And that's when she's done sniffing or done talking to another dog or done terrifying a a small child. Um, And I really want to get that out of her. So I want her to come back to me whenever I want. And, And basically, we need to make her feel much more comfortable and give her lots of positive affirmation. Uh, and so, and, and we're removing the word no from our vocabulary with the dog, which is really difficult, right? Because, uh, sometimes I'll see her, you know, walking away from the cat litter box, just chewing <laughs> and I have to go, oh, 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 who's a good girl? Come on, come here, sit here. There's way too many cords for you to be wandering around. Sit, stay, stay there. I think she's scamming me. I reckon she's like, if I get up every minute, uh, and walk around, I can do whatever I want and get treats. Yes. Stay. Um, But anyway, welcome to the show, guys, where I complain about my dog. Uh, We are here, and uh, look, I've been getting an influx of requests from you guys uh, about what the fuck the email to the podcast is. 
Now, I don't understand why anyone would, would not know what the fucking email is. If you know there's an email in segment, you've got to know what the email is. Because I started off with, now it's time to do the emails. If you would like to email the show, send an email to podcast at loosebeers.com. That's the email, podcast at loosebeers.com. How, how, fucking, how many times do I have to say this on the fucking episode? Killer, do I ever forget to say the email? No. No, I said it's the one thing. I'll forget the, the, the episode we're up to. I'll forget the name. I'll forget what I'm supposed to be talking about. I wasn't supposed to talk about the dog. I forgot about that, right? I'll forget everything about the show other than the email, but that's the one thing you cunts will forget. So I don't know what to do with you guys, all right? It's podcast at loosespears.com. If you want to send me an email, ask me a question, tell me a story, that's what it is, all right? Dear God. Um... This is a, a very important episode. Uh, this is a this is a hugely important episode for the show. Uh, this is uh, isn't it, how important is that is this episode, Keelan? Really? Oh, really? <laughs> no, yeah, you really did, you just fucking see. Listen to this guy just coasting. <laughs> Wasn't even listening. Doesn't know what I'm talking about. Uh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, but for a moment you didn't. Yeah. Great. This is the final episode. Of Spearhead Sundays <gasps> with bra- without braces. Oh. I fucked up that sentence. This is the final ever episode of Spearhead Sundays without braces. So get a load, get 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 your final looks in at my crooked smile. Because this is the final ever episode without braces for two years. Or or eight or hopefully at maximum eighteen months. All right, twelve to eighteen months. For the love of God, please sit down. This is <laughs> Bobby. Come here. Come on. I don't say no anymore. For some reason, I feel like maybe not saying no is is a bad move. But I'm going to trust the trainer and hopefully I get a good. Dog. Come on, good girl. We love that. Sit. Stay. Good girl. Now she's looking at me like I owe her, but I've run out of treats. I'm sorry. She's gonna break my fucking legs. Um, look, this is gonna be the fi- this is the final episode without braces. So this this is the last time you'll see me for a very long time on Spearhead Sundays without braces. Uh, I don't know if there's gonna be an episode next week. There may be. There may not be. I get my braces on May fourth. Fucking sit down. Um, I get the braces on May fourth, uh, and and then I'll do an episode if I can speak. Um, I don't know if I will be able to. We've uh, Rosie and I have pre-filmed a bunch of uh, YouTube videos, so there there shouldn't be a gap uh, until you see my teeth, and uh, then there will be a big gap tooth. Uh, but I get braces May fourth. I get surgery May twenty seventh. So surgery will be very disruptive. The braces I'm hoping less so, um, and uh, that'll be it. So. Yeah, I'm excited. I've just des- I have decided to go with silver. A lot of you guys reached out to me uh, and uh, sent me photos of you with braces, and I reckon silver is the go. I think that's 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 a nice adult color. Is a, a good cool silver. At least then I can be like, yeah, man, check out my silver grills. So that's what I'm doing. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see if the podcast improves or get worse. Gets worse. Who knows? Sit. I give up. Um, Right, Binance is run by Nazis. Binance <laughs> came out with a brand new logo. Binance is, is a cryptocurrency exchange, one of the biggest cryptocurrency exchanges on the planet. And they recently released uh, their new logo, which you could actually tweet out in a hashtag and it would appear on Twitter, right? And sit, please sit, sit down. Good girl, down. Thank you very much. Stay. Um, they released a, a, a logo and it's just a swastika. <laughs> it's just a swastika, right? And they put it out there and immediately everyone's like, hey, your new logo is a swastika. Did you guys know that? How could you not know that? How does that get put through that many teams and not one guy was like, hey, that looks like a swastika. I feel like at least three people were like, hey, that looks like a swastika. And then at least one of them was like, cool, sick, let's do it. It's edgy, it's new. I wonder if we can reclaim this. You know, maybe Binance was like, hey, maybe we can make the swastika our N-word, you know? Like we just repurpose it, make it better. Oh, for fuck's sake, I'm so upset. The microphone has... uh, I'm going to have to pause here. The microphone's been knocked off by the dog. This is awesome. 
And we're back, and this is why we need to fix the dog who's such a good girl with no problems. Good girl, aren't you just a good girl? I would never say no to this woman. Um, look, they came out and uh, they released this new logo, and uh, what did they say in response to everyone on the planet saying, hey, man, that's a swastika? Oh, uh, got it up here. They said, well, that's embarrassing. Not sure how that emoji got through several layers of review without anyone noticing. <laughs> and then they said they'd taken it down. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty. At, at what point do you get, do you believe them? You know, like, oh, several layers of review, and not one person was like, "That looks like a swastika." Either you got the the most uninformed design team in the world, or or a lot of those guys are actually Nazis. You know, I think they were trying to go for the Indian peace sign, which is right. a swastika. Right, but isn't that the other way round? Yeah, it is actually. It's in that shape. It's not. Oh, it's okay. not a swastika. Well, that's like because isn't Binance? <clears throat> Binance is a Chinese company, right? Oh, is I, it? I don't. Know. I believe it is. I believe it's run by a Chinese dude. Yeah, it's it's in the shape of the peace sign. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if it's Chinese, I can understand how that would get a little bit mixed up. I guess, but I don't know. Look, maybe just maybe just don't. Uh, make anything that's swastika like. Although I do say that I do say that wearing this necklace, which often gets compared and almost rightly so to a swastika, it's a bunch of peas though for protection. It's uh, and and it's not until other people started going, "Hey, cool swastika necklace," that I started to notice. I'm like, it does look a little bit Nazi s, doesn't it? But it's too late now. I've been wearing it for years and I'm not taking it off. Okay, that's not what it means to me. Uh, that, that, but that's maybe what it means to people I pass by on the street and they get just like a, a fleeting glance at it and they go, oh, that's a giant Nazi. Um, maybe if I had different hair, it would look less bad. Um, anyway, look, Twitch is, uh, is, is making a, a, a few, few business moves. They've been, they've made the news recently. Uh, Twitch is thinking about cutting creators payments, which of course, you know, if there's one thing creators need less of after the pandemic, it is money. Um, and uh, they've come out and uh, a recent uh, board meeting suggestion has been leaked uh, because Twitch doesn't make any money and they're trying to make money because they're a business um, and despite despite being, uh, you know, uh, the, the figurehead of, of, of capitalist and socialism, if you look at Hassan, um, they are a business and they're trying to make money and uh, they've come out and they've said, oh, why don't, why don't we uh, pay creators like uh, less at the moment? When uh, you subscribe to someone, when you subscribe to an American, uh, they get 70%. But Twitch is coming out and, say, and saying, hey, why don't we bump that down to 50%? Why don't we give creators a 20% pay cut, which is a giant pay cut. And I think a lot of creators, uh, the bigger ones, have like custom deals with Twitch. I know that I was talking to Twitch at some point about getting a higher split of revenue, but they're talking about just getting rid of that entirely. Um which I just think is uh, just fucking stupid. Like, if you want to monetize your platform, if you need to make more money on your platform, a way to not do that is to pay your creators a smaller percentage. Because immediately, when a company that I work on or I post my work on announces that they're, they're, they're going to take a higher percentage of my money, immediately I'm, incentiv I'm incentivized less to generate income, <laughs> right? I'm going to work 20% less hard if you give me more, I will make more, more money. I will make more content, which will make both of us more money. There's a reason why, you know, I prioritize YouTube over TikTok, Instagram, uh, Twitch. It's because I make the most money there. That's that's what it is. There's a, there's a big reason why I push Patreon so much uh, on this show. By the way, support me on Patreon. You get an extra episode every week. It's because they have quite a fair split. Most of the money goes to me. And I also think it's a lot fairer to you guys. Like when I was streaming... When people would subscribe to me, they they're giving me my their hard earned money, my hard earned money. They're giving me their hard earned money, and uh, it's almost a little bit weird to see, you know, most of that going to or half of that going to Twitch. It's like, all right, cool, half of that money went to Jeff Bezos, and like at at some point, you know, I guess that makes sense when it's you. It makes sense when it's YouTube because YouTube has to. It costs a lot of money. Uh, to run YouTube, they take 50%, but they take 50% of advertising, which makes sense, right? Because that's not money that a person has decided to give to me. 
Yeah, but they take 30% of live streams. That makes sense. They take 30% of live stream income because that is money that a person has decided to give to me. No person watching me or watching another streamer wants any money to go to the platform. They understand that some of it has to, but the intention is always to give it to the creator. So I think that if you up the percentage that the platform's taking, it, decent, it decentivizes creators asking for subs right if i get a 20 percent pay cut and i'm a streamer i'm gonna go hey guys don't sub to me send me donations instead i actually get all of that money that makes a lot more sense as a creator so i think that i think it's a sh actually a shit business move by twitch if they choose to instate it which they may not because this is not a rule that they're going forward with right it was something that was said in a meeting as a suggestion is that right yeah it was a report from Someone, I can't remember who, but <clears throat> it's just a proposal at this time. Right. I But also, I wouldn't be surprised if it goes through. They also want to play more ads as well, is an idea they've had, which I don't think is a bad thing. I just think the way that Twitch does ads is, like, fucking stupid. Yeah. Like, uh, they, they just play ads... Uh, that are unskippable in the middle of streams at random points, and then... Also, at the start of a stream, when you click on it, it plays an ad straight away, so you can't even make a decision whether or not the stream is worth watching because you have to sit through, like, a full minute-long, like, Amazon Prime ad that you've already seen. YouTube is pretty smart with their ads. When you click on my video and you see an ad uh, and then you click on someone else's video, you're not going to see that same ad, and you might not even see an ad at all for another few minutes because it knows you've already just seen one. And if you see another one, you're likely to just leave the website or leave the video. They know that. Whereas Twitch has no problems doing that. They'll blast you with an ad as soon as you tune into my stream. You'll see the ad, you'll go, oh fuck, I don't wanna watch an ad. You'll go and check out someone else's stream. It'll start with the same ad that you just skipped 10 seconds ago. So it's uh, the way they implement ads is poor. If they had sidebar ads, if they did picture in picture, if they had the ability to skip, uh, that would work a lot better, but I don't know. I think the, I just think that Twitch is going to die. I think that YouTube streaming is going to kill it. Eventually YouTube has a lot more money and a lot more pull and leverage with creators to just kill Twitch. Uh, I think that, that the only thing Twitch really has at this point is first movers advantage and the culture right? They have a, a much better culture than YouTube streaming, but YouTube has a better experience, better discoverability. Uh, creators make more money, so they'll just naturally be more inclined to move over to YouTube as they have been doing in droves. Their argument is that less than 0.1% of streamers make the equivalent of minimum wage. So what's the point of paying people more? Right. So their equivalent is, oh, they're all living in poverty anyway, so fuck them. <laughs> That's good. I like that. That's like a real Amazon thing of like, oh, all of our workers make no money. Like if you think about it, these Twitch streamers are making even less money than our warehouse workers and our warehouse workers haven't burned us alive yet, so fuck these greedy streamers. <coughs> oh, please. But it, but that is fucking evil because a 20% 20, 20 when you're making millions of dollars it it doesn't matter like all the all the top 10% of streamers it doesn't really matter 20% of their sub revenue isn't going to hurt them that much cuz they've got merch they've got events they've got donations they've got this they've got that they have uh, borderline unlimited money so something change one one income stream changing by 20% doesn't hurt them right it it's, it sucks but it doesn't hurt them but when you're you are like uh, maybe a Maybe if you're a streamer making the same amount of money that I was, I was making, I don't know, I was I was making, I think, like $1,000 to $2,000 a month on Twitch at my peak during lockdown. I don't know if I'll ever get back there or I do want to start streaming again, but I think I will do it on YouTube, to be honest. I was making one to $2,000 a month, which is like, it's a that's a huge amount of money to make on Twitch. But if that is your only source of income... Making 20% less of $2,000 a month, that's $400 a month less. That's a lot of money. That's heaps. That makes a huge, profound impact on, you know, what I'm, what I'm able to afford. You know, $400 a month is like an editor that could make clips that could blow my stream up. It's, uh, you know, it's like 
a lot of rent money if I'm if I've got roommates. Like that's a lot of money a month to just take away from me. Uh, even though I haven't worked any less hard, I haven't done anything. It's just taken from me. So I think that's like it's it's yeah. It might not affect the t the really high earners, and it probably won't affect the people who aren't making like any money. But it's like those middle people who just made it full time on Twitch, or who, or who are just able to bump down to part time at work because they're making you know fifteen hundred dollars a month on Twitch. Twenty percent of that money really, really hurts and really would discourage me if I was, you know, just in the middle range. So I think it's a gross move. And I think that it's just going to push more people to YouTube. Um, I think they also said that they, they're going to stop doing exclusive agreements. That's a good thing about uh, Twitch. They're going to they're gonna stop the exclusive thing was another idea. Because if you don't know, if you're a partner on Twitch, you're not allowed to stream anywhere else. Uh, that's why I never went to partner. I stayed at affiliate. I was like, well, I'm, I don't, I, if you want me to go exclusive, you have to pay me more was my logic. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not going to go exclusive on a platform if you're not going to give me money to do so. Cause you know, we were streaming the loogies. Sometimes I would do streams on YouTube. It's, it, it takes money out of my pocket. So if you want me to be exclusive to your thing, you got to pay me more money. Um, so I never did it. Uh, but they're going to get rid of that, which I think is a good thing for creators, but also a bad thing for Twitch because it means that all of these partners will just start streaming on Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook at the same time. They'll make heaps more money. They'll get seen by way more people, but it's really going to hurt Twitch in the long run because some of those creators might realize, hey, fuck, I'm making a lot more money on YouTube, actually. Why don't I start prioritizing that site? Maybe I stream for an hour earlier uh, on YouTube, and then I open up my stream everywhere else. Um, yeah. So I think terrible for creators to take more money away from them because you don't know how to run a business. Uh, good for creators if it opens it up and gets rid of that bullshit exclusivity thing. That's my thoughts on the whole Twitch thing. Is there anything that I've missed, Keelan? No, I think you got... It was just more ads and less money. Yeah. Yeah, great. More ads, less money. The life of a creator, huh? Uh, speaking of, right... Fucking more ads. This episode is sponsored by Manscaped.com. <laughs> Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. The best ball bag trimmer in the game, nice. right? Lawnmower 4.0. I shaved my face with it recently, right? Before I shaved my ass. That's a little tip for you guys. Uh, I actually have two. I don't. I don't. I don't cross streams. Uh, the get the lawnmower 4.0. It's really good. I, I I've shaved my face. It got the length that I wanted. Uh, I I, sh I use it to shave my privates. It gets the length that I wanted. It's just good. I've I've never hurt myself using it. It's easy to charge. It's got wireless charging and a little dock thing. It's super easy. It's waterproof. I don't know what else to tell you about this thing that's just genuinely good that I use all the time. Uh, they also have uh, a bunch of like grooming products now. They have two in one shampoo <laughs> what nothing nothing funny about that very convenient very convenient i mean lord knows i'm always rushing when i'm in the shower i save. don't have time to go <laughs> i only have time to go <laughs> <laughs> save you lots of time save me lots of time what was that one and a half seconds <laughs> manscape.com use code spears for 20 percent off and free shipping they have chapstick they've got deodorant that's really good they got spray or roll on uh, they have uh ball refreshing wipes for some reason. Uh, but the main thing that I like is just the lawnmower nice. 4.0. It's a, it's a good trimmer. Um, so get it in use code spears, 20% off support the brands that support the show. That's how we keep it all spinning. Uh, and that's how one day we'll eventually pay Keelan to be here. <laughs> they now have an actual face trimmer. Do they? Yeah. Oh, you go to manscaped.com and you'll see that they have a trimmer for your face so oh. that you don't put like ass particles in your face. I'm going to get that. I, and you know what code I'm going to use? What code? You don't know what code? I just said it before, man. I can't remember. Can you give me a refresher? Fuck, man. He doesn't listen. <laughs> this is why he doesn't get paid. Uh, <laughs> use code Spears for 20% off and free shipping. Um, all right. What else do I have to talk about here? Oh, I went to JB Hi-Fi recently. I bought something. And the woman behind goes, uh, what's your postcode? <laughs> what the fuck do you want to know that for? I, bu I bought Elden Ring. A video game. She goes, all right, what's your postcode? Do you know what I said? What'd you say? Let's reenact it. You'll be, you'll be the JB Hi-Fi girl. Okay. Hello, sir. How can I help you? What's all those fucking tattoos? <laughs> all you bitches look the same. 
What's going on? I'm they depressed. couldn't find anyone without a nose ring. I needed something. I needed to feel something. Yeah. <laughs> How come all of you guys also have the same handwriting? You guys all write those signs. <laughs> that's and, true. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, anyway, and then I pull out a gun. Put the money in the back. No. Okay, let's restart this. We got off on the wrong foot. Hello, sir. How can I help you? Hi. Uh, just this, thanks. That's all for you today? Yeah. Great. Uh, what's your email? Doesn't matter. Uh, and what's your postcode? Doesn't matter. That's $100, please. Gee, video games are expensive. <laughs> yeah, cash I literally card. went, doesn't matter. <laughs> she goes, what's your postcode? Doesn't matter. Straight away. That's so fucking rude. <laughs> No, it's not. Don't ask me where I live. It's a store. I don't want to know you. You don't want to know where I live. Mm. I'm at the store around. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, uh, where do you, what? what's your postcode? Oh, obviously you're somewhere around here. What? I don't, I don't, why are these businesses asking for postcodes? Is it so they can find out where to open another store? Hey, why don't you just look at where there's not a store and where there's lots of people? That's all the information you need. <laughs> oh, we don't have one there, but there's lots of people there. Maybe we should open one. That's it. What's my postcode? Doesn't matter. That's my new thing. Doesn't matter. And she was very taken aback. But I said it in a nice way. I was. I didn't grab her by the, the by her lanyard covered in in fucking pins, and go get over you blue haired tattooed icon. Doesn't matter. I was just like, doesn't matter. So yeah, I don't know why these businesses are asking for postcodes. None of your business. Um. <laughs> so yeah, the. Dude, this new app I've been using, Be Real, mm. Keelan and I have been using it. I got onto it because uh, uh, Alex, England Alex, I'm Alex. Well, he's Alex. Um, <laughs> he's been using this app called Be Real. And it's cool, man. It's like this little social media thing. And the whole the whole pitch is it's, it's, uh, it's real or about as real as social media can get. So quite fake. But it's closer to reality than all of the others. Because Instagram is like, you know, every... Post is highly curated. You only show the highlights. You only show your life looking awesome. There's now so many amazing filters that can literally take a girl in bare face and make her look like she's in full face makeup. She's just woken up. Like girls don't have to do their makeup anymore to look incredibly hot. They can even make their lips look bigger and guys can make their muscles look bigger than they are using lighting and shading and other filters like that. And it's just incredibly fake. And that's the appeal. You know, everyone is, has the perfect life on Instagram. I'm just trying to post funny shit, but you know, I'm also not going to post just me looking like shit on Instagram, uh, living a boring life, but be real. Uh, is is uh, it's a kind of a cool concept. Every day, once a day, everyone gets a notification at around the same time on their phone that says you have two minutes to post a selfie and you get one take. You can't take it again. You can't edit the photo. You can't upload a custom photo. You just take it and it takes a photo of uh, both sides of the phone. So the front camera and the selfie camera at roughly the same time. And the, the idea is show people what you're literally actually doing at the time you got the notification. Uh, and if you, you can post late if you got the notification and you weren't looking at it, but it will tell you your, your followers are, oh, he posted 30 minutes late. And it's cool, man. It really shows... Uh, how boring all of these influencers' lives are. Like every single photo from me and Alex for the, from the last month has just been like us just sitting in a laptop looking at a timeline <laughs> or, or sitting in bed. Uh, Keelan posted one. It was just him looking at me. <laughs> and then I posted one. It was me looking at him. You know, it's, it's like it's, it's kind of nice to just see reality a little bit on social media. You just don't get to see that at all. Um but I, I, I guess I, and, and I guess there'll be no influences on there. Can you follow me? I follow you. Yeah, but you know me. I and only, I think I have I to accept your you follow. You and Alex, because I have your contact information. Yeah, phone number. But it doesn't say if you follow me. I, I don't know if you guys follow me. Oh, really? Yeah, I have no idea. I do. So you can't even see if you have followers. Let me have a look. That's interesting. Um, yeah, all I see is just like my memories of the last 14 days. Yeah. See, I think that's kind of cool. Okay, it's just... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I was wrong. My friends. Okay. So yeah. you and Alex have added me. But I, I don't know. I don't know if you guys can like find me on the app or if there'll be influence. I don't know how this if this thing's going to be monetized or how. I guess I guess like anything, you scroll through and you see ads. But it's, it is like a cool idea of like, hey, this is what 
your friends are actually doing. That's cool. I like that. Um, it makes everyone's life just look so much more normal, um, which is sweet. So, but I do, I do a hundred percent see people just accidentally posting their tits because the, the taking a photo with both cameras is dangerous, isn't it? I well, almost posted my dick oh. already have almost right. Cause I didn't initially, I just thought it took one photo, right? <laughs> so I get the notification as I'm getting out of the shower. Uh, and I, I hold the camera up and I, I take a photo of my face. I'm like, oh, I'm all wet. And I'm, I just got out of the shower. Mm. It's real. And then it took a photo of the other camera pointing at the mirror. And I just look at this, my dick and balls. Like, would you like to post? I'm like, maybe. <laughs> Can you? I don't, I, the thing, the cool, cool thing about the app is I can't go to your profile and see your old posts. Right. So they go away as well. You can only see yeah. your memories. You I can't, can't see, see anything. Right, so I think all you can see, it all, yeah, it, it also is like a, it, it's not like another thing to scroll through. Like all I see on my feed, I only follow you and Alex, but I just see the photo that you took and the photo that Alex took today. I can't see what happened yesterday either. So it's just like you check in, you have a look at what happened today, and then once you get to the bottom, it's done. You're like, great, I've seen everything. Sweet. So, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's kind of a cool idea um, and it's fun. I get the notification. I'm like, oh, cool. Let's post what I'm actually doing. So, I don't know. Download Be Real. Who knows? Um, all right. I think it's time to get into the emails. Uh, the email is podcast at Uh Guys, if you're, if you're a fucking idiot, you needed to hear it for a, t- a tenth time. Podcast at lewspears.com. Uh, this uh, uh, segment is where I answer life advice questions uh, or read stories that are emailed in to me uh, from other listeners. Um, and uh, I, I, I always get told too much. Speaking of getting told too much, actually, I, w- I did a, a little Q&A on my Instagram and uh, I just did tell me your deepest secret. And I got, a, I got, you know, I got some juicy stuff that I posted like my girlfriend and I are doing long distance. I've cheated on her six times in four months. That's pretty crazy. Uh, I got another one. I think of you when my boyfriend is fucking me. That's pretty crazy. I found my adult cousin's adult cousin's sex tape on his computer just sitting there. Got some juicy stuff. But let me tell you, those are just the ones that I posted. I got some shit that's, that is left unanswered at the moment. Uh, and I'm reading these and like some actual crimes, some horrific stuff some real bad confessions as well that just aren't very funny and I would never post on Instagram. Uh, I'll be reading a few of those on the Patreon version of this episode because I don't even want to do it on YouTube. So if you'd like uh, an extra episode of Spearhead Sundays every single week and the juicy stuff that I can't put out on YouTube, you can support me on Patreon, join the Discord as well, and you get access to a giant backlog of old uh, secret Spearhead Sunday. Spearhead Sunday Supplement is what I'm calling it if you want more podcast uh, that's where it is. Uh, but before we get into that, it's time for the emails. Um, all right. This one, we've got uh, good old-fashioned cucking. G'day, Khan. I've been meaning to send you this story for years, but I never got around to it. So I was out of a long-term relationship, newly into Tinder, when I matched with this moderately attractive young lady. That, you know what that means, Keelan? That means that he's moderately attractive because you reap what you sow. <laughs> Uh, we were chatting. <laughs> he started it. You know, wh- wh- how dare he do a drive-by on this beautiful queen? <laughs> uh, I matched with this moderately attractive young lady. <laughs> we were chatting and things went well. I got her number and we continued to chat. Things got a bit steamy and I'm quite chuffed with myself. Oh, I've, oh, I'm, I'm quite chuffed. I've matched with a six. <laughs> oh, I'm feeling what a, what a little bloody ego boost. This guy must be a three if he's chuffed. <laughs> This is where the fun begins. She says she has something to tell me and reveals that she has a boyfriend. I think to myself, all right, I can deal with that. I'm a dirty dog with loose morals. Not going to stop me. She then proceeds to tell me that he is aware that she's on Tinder and he's actually interested in watching us have sex. Rosie just stopped editing. She's shocked. (laughs) Fuck. This is where the fun begins. Uh, She says she has something to tell me and reveals she has a boyfriend. Okay, I just read that. My brain fell out. 
Um, she proceeds, proceeds to tell me that he's aware and that she's on Tinder and he's actually interested in watching us. Hmm, this is not something I've done before and uh, something I'm not particularly into. Still, though, the offer for an easy route is on the table and it's been a while. This guy must be a two. Uh <laughs> I was back and forth on the idea of doing it when she says there's one more thing she has to tell me. What could she? What the hell could it possibly be? She drops the bomb and tells me that she's currently pregnant. Oh, no! <laughs> what? Dude! That can't be the family's first outing together, you know? Oh, disgusting. Like, you know my favourite memory of you, son? When I watched your mother get fucked by someone else while you were still in her tummy. That's, that's crazy. Oh, fuck no, there are way too many levels to this one for me. She sees that my interest is rapidly waning and tries to lure me back by sending me pictures of her swollen pregnant titties. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, that was written by the husband, wasn't it? Look at my swollen pregnant titties. Oh, what Women don't speak like that. Would you ever describe yourself like that, Rosie? <laughs> She said no. That's 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 like a that's like a dirty husband sentence late at night. Give me your phone. Yuck. Oh. She says they're nice and big from the pregnancy, which to her credit they were. <laughs> her plan succeeds. Oh no! What a twist. Her plan succeeds, and I engage again. I ask how far along. She is. I mean, if she's at the start and you you can't tell, that's fine. She says there's a bump, but it's not too big. Oh, I'm not into this all at all way too much, but also I'm horny. Mm. So naturally, I did it. Oh, my God. Kind regards. You can't end it there, dude. That can't be the end of the email. I want more. How did it go? What happened afterwards? Was it weird? Did, did you hear it from them again? Oh, my God. That's crazy. This is what I'm talking about, guys. You guys get up to some strange stuff, and then, and I feel like a lot of it is just to tell me about it. You know? Like, oh, I don't really want to do this, but it'll make a good email. <laughs> I wonder what the email is. I can't remember. Podcast at loosebeers.com, guys. Send them through. Fuck me. That's crazy. Uh, we've got... Uh, this email, the second email, and then uh, we'll wrap it up. Uh, this one's called Work Schedules. Hey, Lewis, how are you? As someone who is, <laughs> well, I, right now I'm, I'm, I'm confused, scared, and horny. Um, <laughs> hey, Lewis, how are you? As someone who is wanting to get into the comedy world and start consistently making content online, I was wondering what your daily or weekly timetable looks like and how much of your time is spent working on videos, writing and planning, uh, and perhaps ideas on which... Uh, on on which ways it on on ways in which the creative process could be used to the best of its abilities. I'm 17. I've worked eight different jobs and I've hated them all. Next year, I'm out of school and I would love to focus on this as it's something I would absolutely love uh, and I, and would really want to pursue a career in the future with. Things I struggle the most with is is confidence and commitment towards my ideas and executing them. I know I need to double down and you just do it, but is there a way that helped influence you when you thought, nah, I can't be fucked, hey? Good luck with the surgery and everything. I hope you have a shit one, but also a good one. Um, Look, dude, so right now what I'm doing would just be fucking impossible for you because I have help. You know, right now I'm recording a podcast. I have two people here. Rosie is editing while I'm doing this. Keelan is, uh, before this, was editing podcasts uh, while I was planning the show. So right now I'm, I'm, you know, me and what I do is actually the work of like three to four people every week. So I am outputting a level of content that, four people are pulling off. Like it's an impossible standard. You couldn't replicate it unless you were making enough money to hire people. But so basically my schedule right now is I work Monday to Friday making content. I work from 10 a.m. till 6 p.m. And that's writing videos, researching, uh, filming things, editing them, uh, planning things, recording podcasts. But during that Monday to Friday, I say me, it's actually we. So me and Rosie are in every single day, Monday, Friday, uh, 10 to 6. So that's the work of two people over five days a week, which again would be impossible for you. And then also then there's like one day a week, Luke and Lewis. And then, you know, Luke and I show up one day a week, but then Keelan puts in five days a week to that show, editing it. And then we also have another guy there doing clips. 
So we're making a ridiculous amount of content and that's because we have such an amazing team that helps us pull that off. So my schedule right now is probably a bit unrealistic for you because you also need a job. Uh, and then also after, you know, I film stuff usually on two to th- two to three times a week, I'm performing at night or during the comedy festival, I was, you know, jumping on stage every night. So I would work from like 11 a.m. till like midnight basically for three weeks when I didn't have COVID anyway. Um, so that's probably a bit unrealistic for you, but that's, I guess, something to work towards. But I remember when I had a job, right? When I was just like you, I knew what I wanted to do and I'd had a lot of jobs and I hated them all. My schedule probably looked like this. I had a full-time job <clears throat> and I would uh, I would just basically work both days on the weekend, full days. I would work them creating stuff and writing. And also every lunch break, I would be writing. uh, And then after work, I would, during, on the way to work on the train, I'd be writing or editing. And then on the way home, I would be writing or editing. And then at nighttime, I would film something to edit the next day. Uh, So it would, it would look something like, you know, wake up in the morning at six, uh, get dressed, get ready, start riding on the way to work on the train for an hour, get to work. I do my job nine to five. And then after work, I would write or edit on the way home. And then I would get home at like, you know, six thirty or seven, turn on the camera, film for an hour, have dinner, uh, and then edit until midnight. And that's kind of how I work. So it was a, a crazy amount of work, like unsustainable level of work, But doing that enabled me to bump my full-time job down to part-time. And once I was at part-time, then I had a much more healthy balance of work life. Uh, Well, for me, probably not for the, for like what, what, what everyone else would call a healthy balance. It was still like, you know, performing every night until midnight and uh, doing content and all that kind of stuff. I feel like being a, an online content creator and a stand-up comedian at the same time is a lot of work. I feel like if I if I just quit stand-up or quit the online thing, my life would get so much easier and it would be a lot more manageable and it would almost feel easy to me. But that's probably just because of the level that I've become accustomed to with work. And I think that I honestly think that with the whole like consistency thing and uh, drive and being able to do it, it's literally a skill and you build up a resilience to it. Um, you stress management is a skill uh, and it's something that you can build resi- resilience to. So if I was doing this, all the stuff that I'm doing now, if I was doing that when I was 18, I would, I would go crazy. I would not be able to handle it. There is no way I would be able to work this hard, manage as many people, deal with these surgeries, have a girlfriend and foster a child at the same time without fucking losing it. I mean, I'm, I'm hanging on by a thread as I am right now and I'm 28. Right. Uh, so I think that you need to start small and just slowly ramp up and add things. And what you always need to keep in mind is, am I working efficiently? That was, and honestly still is a big problem for me. I don't always work in as, as efficiently as possible. Um, and I think that it's time management and being efficient, you know, should you really spend three days writing a video or could you just spend three hours writing out dot points and learning how to be funny on the fly? That's kind of what I learned how to do. I used to write, you know, when Killen and I first started working together, my method was like write for three days mm. and then film and then edit for two days. And then by the time the video comes out, it was three weeks late. Um <clears throat> And I've really worked on trying to make that more efficient. So, for example, yesterday uh, I f- I filmed, I wrote a video, filmed it, wrote another one, and then did like a, a video collaboration with the Internet Historian all in a day. Uh, and that's much more efficient. And that's because I've spent time working out how to work more efficiently, but also because I have help, you know, I don't have to sit there and edit anymore uh, because I have someone who can help me out with that. And I also have someone keeping me accountable. Rosie's here Monday, Friday. So I'm always like, well, fuck, I need to come up with something or she's going to be sitting on her ass doing nothing. And that sucks for her. So that helps. Uh, What also helped when I had no money 
is uh, just having a friend who was also doing the same thing as you. You know, I started in a group and working together helps keep you accountable. But then when I went solo, uh, then then I started working with other comedians. I, I worked with Khaled Kalafala and every night we would perform together and help each other ride and help each other become better stand-up comedians. And he was so much better than me. Like find yourself a mentor, someone who's better than you, who will help you without exploiting you. Cause that's, pretty difficult. You know, Khaled was really, really, really great to me and didn't really want anything in return other than, I guess I helped him out a little bit with socials and I got him in my videos and stuff. And he, you know, it was never like a, it was just reciprocal. I helped him, he helped me. Uh, and that's kind of what you want is someone who's like better than you at what you're trying to do, who you can learn from. Uh, if you can't find that without being annoying, just, you know, Ask them a few questions or, or, or hang out with them once or twice or try to help them out. Uh, that's what I really tried to do is be useful to other people uh, so that, you know, they could justify time spent helping me out with my shit. Um, and I think that it, it all comes down to working consistently without burning out because I've burnt myself out a couple times. Uh, you know, when I was working on the comedy special, at, by the end of it, I went nuts and I burnt out. Uh, by the end of last year, I had completely burnt myself out because of COVID and with moving and with traveling and how much harder my job became because of restrictions. I had to take an entire month off in January because I just worked way too hard and couldn't do it anymore. So you have to be careful with that. But I, I, I guess like <coughs> I'm trying to give you like concrete, uh, concrete stuff. I know I need to double down and just do it, but is there a way – that helped influence you when you thought, no, I can't be fucked. Honestly, what really motivated me, what really, really motivated me when I was struggling and when I didn't have money and when I didn't have a team and when I still had a job, and this sounds mean, but what motivated me beyond anything else is every morning at 8 in the morning when I was on the train, I would look around the train and I would look at guys that were like 40, 50, going on the same train as me, wearing clothes that cost the same amount, off to jobs that were similar to what I was doing. And I would look at those people and I wouldn't look down on them, but I would just look at those people and go, that could be me if I don't give everything that I have into this dream is I could be on the fucking train at 40 with my crushed little dream 20 years behind me because I didn't try hard enough. And I just imagined myself in that position and, and I just thought about how much I would regret not trying when I was 18, when I had no responsibilities, when I had no, uh, you know, mortgage, when I had no kids. Cause once you get that stuff, you have to make you, it's too bad, man. Give up that fucking dream of playing the guitar and being a rock star. You got kids now, you got a mortgage, you got a career. I, I just pictured myself in their shoes and how much I would regret not giving everything I had to this tiny, stupid, impossible dream that probably wouldn't work out. I imagined myself, what would I think of me now if I didn't try? Because I'm fine with failing. I'm totally cool with it. If everything that I do crumbles one day and I can honestly look at it and go, I fucking tried my best and it didn't work, I would be cool with that. What I would not be okay with is looking back at myself at 18 and all of those times I decided, oh, I can't be bothered. I'm too tired. I'm going to go out and drink instead. I can't be fucked. Oh, this is more fun. I'm going to play video games instead. I pictured myself at 50 going, man, I could have. And that terrified me. Um, and that's what kept me motivated was how much I disliked my current situation and how disappointed I would be in myself at 50 if I was still there. So that's, I guess, grim, but that's that's really what kept me going. And then also I I just remembered the the how much I loved what I what I what I was doing or what I was trying to do in comparison to what I what I had to do. And I was like, man, if I could if I could make 
$30,000 a year doing comedy, I would be so much happier than making $55,000 working full time in this call center. And I was right. And when I, when I made that 30 and I was able to drop down to like two days a week at the call center, my life got so much better. And then when I, when I made like 40 and I was, uh, I think I actually, I think I quit my job when I was making like 20, 25 a year, roughly. I was like, I can, I can buy food and I can go to gigs and that's all I need. And I live like that for like two years, just making 20, 30, this and that. It, and, it, and it worked, made me happy. Um, and I don't regret it at all. And I'm living the, I'm living a great life. And as difficult as it has been for the last two years, I, I look back at myself at 18 and I go, thank you so much for going through all of that and pushing through it and having the terrible job and throwing all of the money into the hole to try and make it work. Uh, uh, and, uh, I'm here now. If you want to be motivated, go back and listen to the early episodes of Spearhead Sundays. I think I still had a job. Did I? I think so. I think when I started listening to you in 2016, you had a job. Mm. I think. Yeah, I think so. I think I, I had a job and I talked about how much I fucking hated it every day. Mm. And I, and, and there's probably a few times I don't particularly know, but there's pr you probably, there's a couple episodes where I would have quit jobs and then gone back to them. Maybe. <laughs> I think I, I, I definitely did that where I quit and then I worked out I wasn't making enough money and I had to go back. And it was one of the worst moments of my life of going back to the call center. Uh, sucked, but it's possible. And, and you know, it's ups and downs, man. Right? It's ups and downs. You, you work in this call center. You hate your life. You do one tour. You're like, fuck you, I've made it. And then you work out, oh shit, I don't have any money. And your girlfriend goes, do you realize that I've been paying for everything for the last six months? That's the only reason you're alive. Get a fucking job now. You're not a comedian yet. And I, go, oh, I guess you're right. Back into the call center. Oh. <laughs> she was right though. It was, you know, I was like, man, I'm, I'm a comedian. She's like, no, I've been paying for your lunch. <laughs> you're not a comedian. You're a broke guy who does open mics. Oh yeah, I guess I am. So yeah, that's my advice is, is just, unfortunately there is no other answer. Just do it. I wasn't motivated every day today, even, even not today, but right now, sometimes I wake up and I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to do it. I don't have any ideas. I don't, I can't think of any videos. I, I don't feel funny. I, I don't know what I should be doing, but I fucking show up and I pull something out of my ass and I do something. Uh, and I always find myself <laughs> figuring something out or at least writing half of a video, you know, start small. Uh, that's my advice, dude, is, 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 and that's a little bit of my story is just, uh, you know, I didn't come from money. I didn't have anyone funding my shit. I didn't have anything really other than I was able to work way harder than everyone else. And I think that's still my strongest point is I might not have like mainstream appeal or, or looks or relatability, but I can fucking outwork everybody else. And I think that's what I've always had. And what I've always relied on is just being able to work harder than everyone else. Uh, and that's what I would recommend to you, man, is, you know, fucking go hard or you'll be that guy at 50 that I looked at and was like, man, his, his shirt costs the same as mine, which means we probably earn similar money, which means, He's just me in 30 years if I don't try. Fuck. And then I would have panic attacks on the train. Actually, maybe don't. <laughs> maybe maybe I don't recommend that. Because one time I distinctly remember looking at a guy and going, oh, fuck, that's going to be me and having a panic attack on the train. I don't know, man. Look, take it with a grain of salt. Good luck. Work hard. See you later. Have a shit one. If you want more podcasts, it's going to continue on Patreon right now. See ya. Have a shit one.